After familiarizing yourself with the flange hog 110 kit contents, measure the ID of the flange and consult the clamp rib and pad selection chart to determine the tooling configuration. In this case, we are facing a 2 inch flange and will need the H3 rib, small wedge, and associated draw rod and actuator. Start by attaching the clamp ribs to the actuator with the taper side facing in and inserting the draw rod actuator assembly into the tool. Rotate the knurled knob until the ribs begin to expand and then place the clamp system into the flange so that the ribs are about a quarter inch below the surface as shown. As the ribs expand, slightly jostle the tool forward, back, and side to side so that the clamp ribs can properly seat and accurately self-center. Now that the body is clamped to the flange, locate your tool post assembly, inserts, and insert holders. For extremely small flanges, you can use the 90 degree insert holder to reach the smaller size, but for this example, the straight insert holder will suffice. Attach the insert to the insert holder using the Torx wrench and screws found in the plastic insert holder case. Keep in mind that the quarter inch inserts are double sided and can be flipped over when one side becomes dull. Now attach the insert holder to the tool post assembly in whichever orientation suits your flange size. The black screw that holds the insert holder in place should be snug but not tight to allow the insert holder to be advanced while minimizing movement. Rotate the index nut clockwise pulling the insert holder up about halfway leaving clearance for final adjustments. The starting position of the carriage will vary on different size flanges but generally it should be closer to the mandrel as the tool feeds outward. In this case we will leave a small space between the body and the carriage to allow clearance for the tool post assembly in our next step. When the tool post assembly is attached, the insert should be just above the surface of the flange and barely outside the inside diameter. To set the depth of the insert, advance the insert holder and rotate the tool back and forth until the insert barely scratches the surface of the flange. Once a small scratch is visible, pull the knob and advance the carriage inward so that the insert is above the inside diameter of the flange. Now advance the indexing nut another 1 12th of a turn to set the final depth of the insert and tighten the screw that holds the insert holder in place. Once the knob is re-engaged, the tool is ready to face. To face the flange, hold the gray knob and swing the tool counterclockwise in a smooth motion. Be sure to keep your wrist locked as any non-coordinated movement with the tool will cause imperfections and gasket seat grooves. Do not stop rotating until the entire surface has been faced. Never rotate in reverse and never use any part of the tool except the gray knob to rotate. If rotation becomes too difficult, it usually means the insert has been advanced too far and needs to be reset. Now we will show the setup and facing process on a 10 inch flange. First steps for this process are the same as discussed in the first example. Measure the ID of the flange and consult your chart for tooling configurations. In this case we will be using H4 clamp ribs, H7 pads, as well as a large wedge and associated draw rod and actuator. To switch wedges, loosen the wedge screw and remove the wedge from the mandrel. Now slide the large wedge onto the mandrel and tighten it in place. Since the large wedge uses H ribs but has a greater diameter than the smaller wedge, the springs for holding the ribs together need to be switched out for larger ones. The easiest technique for doing this is by removing the smaller springs, placing the ribs onto the large actuator, and then attaching the large springs to hold the ribs in place. Now that our rib and actuator assembly is prepared, we can reinsert it into the tool the same way we did in the first example, using the knurled knob to draw them in. A unique feature of the large wedge is the finger system that is used for easier mounting with the added weight of heavier tooling. These three fingers are extended out by loosening the finger screw, extending the finger, and then retightening the finger screw in place. Now the pads can be attached by simply matching the captured mounting screw to the rib and firmly tightening. The flange hog is now ready to be mounted to our larger flange. Jostling the tool is not necessary on this size flange since the large wedge fingers will be assisting in accurate alignment. Simply place the clamping system into the flange and tighten your ribs. Once the tool is firmly clamped, we can retract the fingers by loosening the finger screws and rotating them in towards the center. Precisely squaring the flange hog to the surface of larger flanges is important to check due to flange size and torque requirements for a smooth operation. To verify accurate alignment, we will attach the indicator bracket to the carriage using the same bolt used to mount the tool post assembly. When mounting the dial indicator to the bracket, be sure that the probe has clearance on both ends for an accurate reading. Once mounted, rotate the tool to find the low and high points and set the dial indicator to zero at the most positive reading. In this example, the tool position over one side of the flange is about ten thousandths of an inch off. As you can see, the indicator reading at this point is negative ten thousandths. 
but this means that the flange hog is further away from the face of the flange at this position than it is the opposite side. So to correct this misalignment, we will use a simple hammer and punch to tap down on the appropriate ribs in order to bring the tool closer and even it out with the other side. This step can take some getting used to and will vary depending on flange condition and material, but obviously we want the reading to be as close to zero as possible when we make a full rotation. Now that the flange hog has been indicated and squared, we will remove the indicator and attach our tool post assembly, insert, and insert holder. Setup with these components on the larger flanges is the same as in our first example, but we do suggest checking the travel of the carriage once the tool post assembly is attached to make sure that there is no interference between the tool post assembly and the body from angle positioning. Setting the depth of the insert is also the same process, however when you move the carriage to its starting position, the final depth setting should be about a sixteenth of a rotation rather than a twelfth. You may notice that the larger flanges have more resistance when facing compared to the smaller ones, but this is simply due to where the resistance is in relation to the body. Imagine the flange hog body as a lever, so when the resistance moves further out on the lever, more torque will be required. Facing motion should still be smooth though, so if you feel that you are digging in too far, you may need to reset the depth. Although the flange hog 110 is very easy to use, we suggest taking some time to practice on some spare flange stock in order to familiarize yourself with using it. Esquitool is more than happy to go over any questions you may have and encourage live demos through our sales reps or video conferencing to ensure that you have a full understanding of how to operate the tool. For more information, please feel free to visit our website and or contact us and we will do anything we can to assist.